Starting off this countdown, we have the old Inunaki Tunnel. This is said to be the most haunted tunnel in Japan. And that's because a number of people have been killed in or around this tunnel. One of the tragedies occurred on December 7th, 1988. Five teens tried to steal a car, and it ended with them kidnapping and torturing the driver. Over the years, a number of murders have happened there. Like in 2000, a person was killed there, and their dead body was found dumped in a nearby dam. So this is why the tunnel is considered cursed. Not only that, but some say the ghosts of the dead haunt this tunnel still. In our ninth spot today, we have Camp Hansen. This was a United States Marine Corps base used during World War II. Now, it's been given the name as one of the most haunted places in the country. One particular eerie area on site is Building 2283. This building was used as housing for the US military. Afterwards, it was used for storage, since no one wanted to live there. That's because it's haunted. In fact, it's the single most haunted house in the entire US military. So legend goes that in the 1970s, an Air Force officer murdered his entire family in this building before killing himself. The next military family to live there reported feeling uneasy and experienced paranoia. And then the father of that family went crazy and stabbed his entire family. So that's why it became a storage house. That didn't stop the spooky activity from happening though. People still report paranormal activity going on in this house. They've seen apparitions of the family members and have heard screaming and crying. One of the eeriest things is that there is a daycare next door, and teachers were getting upset because kids kept throwing their toys over the fence. According to the kids, the children on the other side of the fence asked them to. Dun, 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 there's no children there. <laughs> In our eighth spot today, we have Okigahara Forest, which you probably know better as suicide forest, although editors have to be about the words. Died, so whatever. This forest earned that name because of a number of people have taken their lives in this forest. It's said that every year as many as 100 people go to this forest to take their life. But why this forest? Why this place in particular? How did it start? Well, it's theorized that a 1960 book called Kuro Jukai started this concept. In the book, a heartbroken lover goes to the sea of trees to end her life. Others believe that the forest has some sort of curse that forces people into thinking these thoughts. Either way, it's a very scary forest. Those that stray from the path have run into bodies hanging from the trees. In fact, cases got so bad that the Japanese government had to place a board outside of the forest that reads, think carefully about your children, your family, and your life is a precious gift from your parents. But still, some say that there's a weird negative energy and eerie silence that washes over you when you enter this forest. In our seventh spot today, we have Orenbuchi Bridge. The story behind this haunted bridge is a brutal one. Apparently in the 17th century, this area was a place for women of the night to find lonely miners. The area by this bridge had gold mines that were run by the Takeda clan, who also ran a brothel to keep these miners happy. Well, one night a group of miners killed 55 prostitutes on this bridge by destroying it. Their bodies fell into the gorge below. To this day, it's said that cries and screams of the women can be heard from the gorge. In our sixth spot today, we have Nakagosuku Hotel. This is actually a very famous haunted attraction in Japan. Japan. Now, it was first built as a luxury resort slash hotel. However, a monk warned them not to build the hotel there, as it would disturb the graves in the area. But they did not listen, and they built it anyways. As a result, a number of the workers became cursed. Some got badly injured. Others died during construction, so they stopped the construction of it. Now, the owner was mad, and as an attempt to show the workers that there was nothing to fear, he decided to stay overnight at this hotel. He was never the same after that night. When people found him, he was incoherent, talking nonsense. He ended up disappearing and no one saw him ever again. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with Okiku Well. This is another very extremely haunted place in Japan. And that's because it's haunted by the spirit of Okiku, a young girl who worked at a castle as a servant to a well respected samurai. Now, there are two versions of the story, so I don't know which one is real. But both stories end with the samurai becoming enraged with the girl and throwing her down the well on their lot. To this day, her soul still haunts this well. It's said that every night, she crawls out of the well and wails at the top of her lungs. In our fourth spot today, we have the SSS Curve. Located in Okinawa, I hopefully I pronounced that right, the SSS Curve is a pathway which gets its name from the shape of it. Now, what's the big deal about this path, you ask? Well, this is the path where a number of Japanese soldiers lost their lives in World War II. And to this day, it's believed that their souls have never been able to move on. They are attached to the land 
and continue to haunt it. In fact, people who have walked this path have often felt like someone or something was touching them. Others have gotten sick and dizzy. Some even have experienced hallucinations. In our third spot today, we have the Himoru Mansion. This is for sure one place you should never travel to. Unless you're crazy, then go ahead. So apparently, this mansion was the site of a number of gruesome murders. Seven individuals were found murdered during an occult ritual. The individuals were practicing a strangling ritual to try and seal off bad karma on the earth. The ritual involved raising a woman in secret, not letting her form any connections with anyone, and then tying her limbs to oxen for it to drag her. Then when that was done, all four of her limbs were tied to different oxen and then they would, you know, move. However, it turns out that this woman had secretly fallen in love with a young man. So the ritual did not work. Since it failed, the man of the household killed everyone before taking his own life. To this day, the family's ghosts still linger in this house. Some say they feel compelled to complete this ritual on their behalf. Others have said that they have seen blood splatters appear on the walls. Others have seen this woman's face appear in the window. In our second spot today, we have Iwo Jima Island. Now, let's stop with all the haunted stuff for just one second, because this island is scarier than ghosts, okay? And that's because it is very dangerous. It is home to a 161 meter high volcano. This volcano has been listed as the most dangerous active volcano in the world. In fact, it's said to erupt sometime in the next 100 years. An eruption would lead to a huge 25 meter high tsunami that would hit the coasts of both China and Japan. Millions would die as a result, and we can't really prevent this from happening. And in our number one spot today, we have the Round School House Ruins. This was a school built in 1906, and based on its name, I'm sure you can guess. Yes, it was built in a circular fashion. Now, this school was built for children of coal miners that worked at the mines nearby. However, in 1974, the school was abandoned after Japan decided to import coal instead. And nowadays, it's considered very haunted. Are we surprised? No. A number of people who have explored this dilapidated building have heard voices and footsteps. Some even hear screams coming from the woods at night. One story goes that a group of friends decided to explore the ruins of the house when a strange figure attacked and chased them back to their car. They claim that this figure was not human at all. In fact, even Japanese mediums refuse to go anywhere near this site because they get bad vibes from it. Starting off at number 10 is 17 hours. This sort of reminds me of the book called Touching the Void where these two guys are climbing this glacier or mountain and something goes wrong and one of them has to cut the rope and let the other one loose otherwise they were both gonna die and the one who gets cut off lands in this crevice and actually survives. Either way this one was shared by Reddit user Beach Knoll whose grandpa had just gone back from World War II and decided exploring was his new hobby. Him and his friends went into Mammoth Cave despite it being on privately owned property. Doors were a lot more lax back then clearly. Either way while in there with their flashlights they had a group of people somewhere else in the cave because of all the echoing. They quickly cut the lights since the sounds didn't seem very friendly and they waited. His grandpa and friends went deeper into the cave to lose them and imagine this level of darkness where you can't even see your own hand in front of you. It's like a black hole with just no light coming in. They then spent 17 hours in there hiding and the only thing getting them through it was one of their friends saying we didn't survive that to die in here, obviously referring to the war. And no you didn't my friend, so you're gonna survive that Coming in at number 9 is a secret society. This one's from Reddit user Ludovico Specs and was about the basement that was under his college language lab. Turns out the place was turned into some sort of secret society in the 1800s and the whole building used to belong to them at one point. It had hospital lights all over it which were always just very creepy. There was an inch of water on the floor too but the weirdest part was the main room. It had vaulted ceilings supported by pillars that had stone skulls mounted on top of them. On top of the skulls were metal spikes which is just sus as well why would the secret society need just skulls on on poles it's weird. The front room also had this old so with the backstage area that had a chair with a bunch of questions written on it, like were they a secret society or a cult? Now the user thought his discovery was pretty cool, so he came back the next night with some of his friends to show them. The night after that, he tried coming back again, but it had been mysteriously padlocked. No one wanted him snooping, evidently. And number eight, we have the closet. This one would have sent me running for the hills and was shared by you see the thing is on Reddit. The police had confiscated 
this house from a biker gang a few years back and it had sat empty ever since. So the user who works at an insurance company had to go to the house and assess its damage. We already know insurance people always screw you over so okay. Now while in there he described the house as pretty normal, you know white walls, red plywood flooring, the door locks weren't rusted yet so it was all pretty good, pretty normal. But then they opened the linen closet to see deep scratch marks all over the inside and dents like someone was trying to escape from inside of there. The worst part was that right on the back wall was this red spatter that had been painted over but was still very visible. But the user's thoughts went to the person finally escaping to then somehow getting shot in the head, which is beyond screwed up, but I mean the scratch marks, the dents, like it makes sense. <laughs> Filling our number 7 slot is Chew Chew. Now this one was shared by Reddit user Hi Dingy Do, who shared that he used to walk along this old abandoned railroad line just to observe some wildlife. Which sounds really peaceful actually and I'm sure it was until this encounter. Over the years the metal tracks rusted and were taken out and all the equipment was also taken away. The whole thing became overgrown with shrubs and weeds and so to an outside perspective you never really would have been able to tell it had been a train track ever. Either way one night the user went walking there with a friend and out of Nowhere they hear a voice saying choo choo. Shitting themselves, they turned around to see this old smiling man crouched in the bushes, just staring at them from the dark shadows. Like, who the hell are you, bro? Like, I'm just trying to vibe and observe some wildlife. Like, who the frick are you? Oh, hell no! I would have literally just kicked the old man. I'm really not as violent as you guys, as you guys think I am, but like I will kick people if I have to. I'm not even worried about it. Now, and number six are the cats. This one makes my blood boil, and was shared by Redditor Jetstream Wolf. They shared that there's this one hotel in their hometown that's super run down and that everyone just kind of breaks into fun. So they and two friends decided to crawl into the basement from a side entrance. Initially all they saw was graffiti but as they went upstairs they saw blood stains all over the floor. Was someone murdered there? Find out in a second. Now they see a bunch of dead cats that have been dragged around this room and come to the realization it's their blood. That was all they had to see before running the frick out of there like no 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 no. No, no. <laughs> that would have been me <laughs> before some serial killer in the bag just like hits me like she was annoying. <laughs> Coming in at number five is the ice plant. This one was shared by Redditor Digital is 303, who was very into urban exploration as a teenager. See, I was more into Gossip Girl and reading than I was exploring abandoned buildings, but to each their own. I never judge. Outwardly. Now, either way, there was this old ice plant near the user's house that had burned down 35 to 30 years beforehand which is very ironic you're an ice plant and you burned it down bit of shocking behavior either way the place was super overgrown and as the user was exploring the mangled concrete and rebar everything seemed just normal and old and burned disappointed the user went home but a few days later they hear that a corpse was pulled out of the plant by the police the user had literally walked past a dead body and had no idea like dude open your eyes or your nose how do you not smell a dead corpse apparently they smell like proper like, was your nose blocked that day, bro? What's going on? <laughs> At number four is the cleanup. Abandoned mental hospitals are one place you will just absolutely never find me. Too much pain and suffering has been endured in these places, especially from the way they used to be treated. So this one comes from Reddit user Sloth Copter, who said they explored this abandoned mental hospital that opened up sometime in the 1800s. They opened this freezer inside to find mold all over it and inside of it. And in the past, they had used it to put dead bodies in there. So did those bodies? mold? Did the mold come from something else? I don't know. Now in another hallway they found the word blood written in blood since they had it tested and the word high written in spray paint which clearly meant others had explored this place before this person did. Which is not surprising since urban explorers will literally do everything except like meth. Either way the person decided to visit the place again a few days later and when they did the blood was mysteriously gone but the high was still there. So who is coming in and out of this place and leaving messages in blood and then cleaning them up. Filling our number 3 sod is the Sprinter. This one comes from a now deleted reddit user who went to explore an abandoned school in his town with a few of his friends. It was really hard to get into since the whole thing was boarded up but they managed to climb up a pipe on the side of the school and get in through a window. They checked out the basement first that had been flooded so it was very eerie just watching the stairs disappear underwater. They then checked out the gym and as they were leaving it they heard single footsteps coming from the other side of the gym door. Now that 
had scared the shit out of them since this person or thing was blocking their roof exit, you know, trajectory. The person sounded like they were just periodically walking around and then stopping, not even properly exploring. There was no light where they were coming from, which spooked the group even more. The group decided to hide out for a bit, and after seeing no one in the hallways, they decided to make a break for the roof exit door. As soon as they did, they heard someone sprinting after them, not even that far behind them. They ran the hell up those stairs and managed to get out without getting caught or killed by whoever was in there. Bro, why were you in there alone, you creep? Now, and number two is quitting your job. This one was effed and came from Redditor Takausin, who said this happened around 13 years ago. As an electrician, him and his partner were sent out to this restoration project for a house that was built in the early 1900s. And when they got there, they were told some info about the house, like how it had two owners since it was built, and how the last one was this old woman who passed away a decade prior, and there was no one left in her family that could take it. So it was auctioned off to this young couple who wanted to modernize the whole place, which is very understandable. So they got to work installing things and had to open the attic hatch to find out it was very cramped as hell up there, and so only the tiniest worker could go up and replace the intake cable. Now the user was the smallest, obviously, so he went up there and could smell this old people smell, so he just assumed it was like her death smell, but it kept getting stronger. When he got up there fully, the stench was awful, and when he turned his flashlight on to the left of him, he saw five cat carcasses, some partially eaten by insects or whatever eat corpses, and the others were just bones and rotten skin. The dude had just had his lunch break, so he threw up on the spot and actually quit his job after this project was done. That's scarring. And finally, animal one is the asylum. This one actually scared me a bit in my seat, and it's not even like I sit at my desk in a room alone. There's people around me, I was just still scared, because I'm small. Shared by Reddit user Daddy's Little Screamer, when she was 16, she and her friend decided to explore the abandoned asylum grounds near her house. Firstly, if I lived in a house near asylum grounds, I would force my parents to move. That's not happening from any angle. Though there was this one tower there that had been locked for it seemed like five ever, but that day it wasn't, and at the top of the tower there was a light on, and they both heard a dog barking. Thinking a dog maybe accidentally got itself stuck in the tower, they looked up and were shocked. There was a silhouette in the window for sure, but it was a person's silhouette, not a dog's. The person was the one barking. Without even going into the tower, the girls ran away and all they heard was this person call out bye now in a creepy sing-song voice. You guys know what's coming next, don't you? Oh hell no! <laughs> guys, this whole video was a hell no! No, 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 no! Abandoned houses, no! While there are many reportedly haunted hotels in Texas, this one seems to top many lists for the most ghostly activity. Most of this seems to stem from the very chilling stories of room 525. In the 1880s, there was a young couple that was having their wedding at the hotel, or at least that was the plan. The groom got cold feet and left the bride at the altar. Now heartbroken, she ran upstairs to their suite, room 525, and took her own life. And it's said she still walks the halls in her long white gown. But that isn't the end of the story. Because in 1991, another bride was spurned at the altar, and after going on a shopping spree with the groom's stolen credit card, she too returned to room 525 and took her own life. Since then, guests have seen her carrying a pistol and walking into the room, all without ever opening the door. So don't stay in room 525 or you may never check out. There's also an eerie painting that's said to be inhabited by the spirit of a young girl, the daughter of a senator, whose expression seems to change on its own. People who view the painting have said that they feel like they were floating off of the ground, though they remained on the floor. They also say that their equilibrium and balance was off for a few hours after looking at her. Number 9, USS Lexington, Corpus Christi. Now before I tell you about this spooky ship, make sure to hit the subscribe button so you can catch all of our amazing videos. As a naval vessel that saw actual battle, there have been multiple lives that were lost on board, including that of an engine room operator who still roams the ship at night waiting for the battle to end. The crew of the ship have often reported flickering lights and doors slamming on their own, which given that this is a very well maintained historical site, you'd think that they would have found the cause by now. Maybe it's just the ghosts of sailors 
colors lost to time. Coming in at number eight, we have the Marfa lights in, you guessed it, the town of Marfa. While there is so much beauty in the area and plenty of non-spooky reasons to visit, the main tourist attraction to this quaint little town are floating, sourceless lights that seem to change color and even move in the night sky. Many visitors make the journey at all times of year to see the lights, and there's even a yearly festival made in their honor. Reported since 1883 by people of all ages and professions, no one knows what these floating orbs are. They appear at random, but usually in the same area of the sky, and since there's so much open space and low light pollution, it's perfect for stargazing, or seeing spooky orbs, I guess. <laughs> some say that these lights are UFOs, some say spirits, and others think that they're just headlights. All that I know is that if I see a mysterious floating orb, I'm going the other way. Number seven, Woman Hollering Creek, San Antonio. Said to be the home of La Llorona, or the Weeping Woman, this creepy creek leaves anyone who visits with a sense of dread. As the story goes, La Llorona was a woman who was distraught that her once doting, affectionate husband left her for another woman. And after confronting him and leaving the confrontation with cuts and bruises, she waded into the water, dressed in her best clothes, and drowned herself in the creek right after doing the same to the rest of her family. Her chilling screams for her children can be heard all the way from the highway, giving her and the creek its very apt name. Many people have felt themselves being drawn towards the water by ghostly voices, and some have even been tugged towards the bank of the creek. Perhaps it's La Llorona looking for her next victim. The screams heard and feelings of being pulled into the water have mostly been reported by younger people, making this all the more terrifying, given what La Llorona did. Number six, El Paso High School. Now, when you're thinking of haunted places, a school isn't exactly the first place that comes to mind, but this one has quite a story. In 1985, the graduating class received their yearbooks, and when basking in the nostalgia of their group photo, they noticed something odd. A woman who no one could identify was in the picture with them. Now, obviously, that would be quite concerning. I know I'd be freaked out if there was someone I'd never seen before standing next to me in a picture. The blurry apparition still has not been identified to this day, but some think it's a student who fell from a window years before who never got to graduate. I say give her the diploma. She's already in the yearbook. Sticking in El Paso, in our number five spot is the Plaza Theater Performing Arts Center. As someone who loves the theater, I try to see as many shows as I can, but I think I'll skip visiting this theater, no matter how good the production is. Built in 1930 as a movie house, demolished for a parking lot in the late 80s, and rebuilt as a live theater space, this building has seen many, many changes, but some things have stayed constant throughout its history. Many workers of the building have reported seeing a man in one of the box seats, in a tuxedo, smoking a cigarette. One crew member recalls seeing him after turning on the stage lights, sitting alone in the box, as though he'd been there for hours already before the lights came on. And when she saw the smoking man, he turned to her and said, we all have our time to die, and then threw himself headfirst over the balcony, vanishing before he could hit the ground. A former vice president of the theater also recalls seeing a ghostly girl bouncing a ball in the aisles of the theater and always staring. He also noticed that there was a rag doll that seemed to appear and disappear on its own, moving to locations that it couldn't have without someone's help. Even locked doors didn't seem to stop it from appearing in the projection booth. Number four, Yorktown Memorial Hospital. Established in 1951, this abandoned hospital has been named one of the most haunted places in America. And since over 2,000 patients are said to have died within its walls before it shuttered its doors in 1992, I can see why. Reports of apparitions of people in hospital gowns running through the corridors or hiding in rooms are numerous, along with moving wheelchairs, disembodied voices, and footsteps. But there are some who have even more chilling stories. While exploring the halls and rooms that have remained largely untouched since its closure, some ghost hunters have been touched, had their clothes tugged on, or even pushed to the ground while being given a ghostly warning. Some of the spirits are believed to be that of patients who had illegal medical experiments performed on them and lost their lives in the process, making for a very vengeful ghost. Number three, the Screaming Bridge in Arlington. On the night of February 4th, 1961, six from the local high school were taking a drive after seeing a movie earlier in the evening. While driving down Bedford Road toward the rail crossing bridge, which had mysteriously been burned down a few years previous, only rebuilt earlier that year, they were startled by another car reversing and honking its horn wildly. 
This caused the driver to speed up out of fear and not realizing that the bridge was out, the car careened over the edge and crashed into the other side of the ravine. Unfortunately, three of them lost their lives that night, and their screams of terror can still be heard by anyone traveling the renamed Greenbelt Road. The saddest part of this story is that the car that startled them was being driven by a man who had just barely avoided going over the edge of the broken bridge himself, and he was reversing and honking to warn them of the danger ahead. The entire area, now known as Death Crossing, is now blocked off and no traffic travels through. At number two on our list, we have La Carafe in Houston. This historic bar, built originally as a bakery in 1860, has been serving patrons for decades. But many come not only for the drinks, but for a paranormal experience. Bartenders and visitors alike have seen apparitions of a hulking man walking upstairs and hearing his giant footsteps pacing the floor. No one knows who this may be, but some say he died there from some nefarious means. The former manager of the bar can also be seen staring out of the top floor window, looking over his patrons and ensuring they're having a good time. And he seems a bit more friendly. <laughs> However, there are some that report the sounds of a body being dragged across the floor above, but when the sound is followed, nothing's there. Makes you wonder what happened upstairs. And since it's one of the oldest buildings in the city that's been in continuous use, it's become a tourist hotspot and a historical site. Personally, I won't be stopping in for a drink anytime soon, no matter how good the cocktails are. And finally, number one, the Alamo. While students are taught to remember the Alamo, they don't really teach about all of the spirits who can never forget. In the infamous battle, thousands of soldiers lost their lives, and many were dumped into mass graves and others left to rot out in the sun, so it makes sense that you'd have some pissed off ghosts wandering the ground. There have been countless reports of soldier apparitions walking with weapons in hand, taking their usual patrol, and even full platoons screaming and charging into battle. Even in the afterlife they couldn't get away from war, and so they continue to fight their invisible enemy. There are also accounts of a small blonde haired boy hiding in multiple places where the gift shop now stands, so make sure to pick up your haunted keychains. While the buildings are beautiful to look at and the area is interesting to explore, the history can leave one with a haunting feeling, and with all those spirits around, I'd be careful touring here, especially at night. Starting off this list, and at number 10, the Island of the Dolls. Okay, maybe this one I'm a little curious about, but take a look at this. It looks like a scene from a horror movie. Hundreds of dolls strung up and hanging from trees. Anastasio's uncle started collecting these dolls 50 years ago after he found the body of a young girl who drowned on these shores. If you don't enjoy creepy, worn out looking dolls hanging from trees, then this is definitely not the place for you. Just south of Mexico City, there's a small island with an incredible sad backstory. It is dedicated to the lost soul of an unfortunate girl who died under unusual circumstances. Apparently these dolls were hung because people claimed that they were being haunted by the spirit of a little girl. So they started to hang dolls in an attempt to please her spirit. But could you imagine an island that is full of terrifying dolls with severed limbs and decapitated heads? I wouldn't even want to visit this island in the daytime, let alone at night. This is a little bit too extreme even for me, so you know what, let's move on. Let's see what else we have on this list. Warren Occult Museum haunts us in at number nine. Yeah, you guessed it. This is the place where haunted artifacts are put on display for the world to enjoy and for me to be terrified. All of these artifacts belonged to paranormal investigators Ed and Lorraine Warren, and it's believed that these items are some of the most haunted things on this earth. So what exactly is at this museum? Well, the infamous Annabelle doll is housed behind a glass case, and it is believed that this doll can cause serious harm to a person, so that's why it's hidden away in protection. Protection for us not for the doll. Then we have the wedding dress. Apparently anyone who puts this on will murder their fiance. And then we have the conjuring mirror, the famous mirror. But those are just a few of the haunted artifacts that you can find there. And trust me, you definitely don't want to find yourself in the museum after dark. Who knows what these haunted items are capable of doing. Linkin Park in Baltimore brings us to number eight. Apparently if you were to dig a hole in this park, you will probably stumble across a dead body since 1946 
1996, at least 79 bodies have been found in this park, which is absolutely insane. Because of its numerous accesses to roads, lack of maintenance, and ton of hidden areas off of the regular path, this park has become a popular place to hide dead bodies in. There's even a website that is dedicated to mapping out the locations where the bodies have been found and what happened to each one of the victims. So I can confidently say that this is a place that you do not want to visit at night because you never know who you might run into and maybe you'll become the next body that gets buried there. Number seven, we have the Union Cemetery in Connecticut, USA. Locals say that this is the most haunted cemetery in Connecticut, but it can also be argued that it's the most haunted cemetery in the USA. According to the local legends, the most famous ghost that haunts these grounds is the White Lady. Lots of people have been able to take pictures of her and they all look the same. She has long dark hair and wears a bonnet and nightgown. She can mostly be found roaming the roads and she she likes to be hit by oncoming vehicles to give that person a good scare. In 1993, a man hit the lady and he heard a massive thud. When he went out of his car to check the situation, he saw a huge dent in his car and the woman appeared in front of him. The cemetery is locked at night and it's actually patrolled by the police. So yeah, I would say that's probably for the best. And now at number six, we're talking about Devil's Pool in Queensland, Australia. Well, at first glance, this river looks pretty nice. Well, you would be sadly mistaken. This natural pool is situated between massive boulders and it's thought to have been cursed by an aboriginal woman who tragically drowned herself after her husband was taken away from her. Ever since it's been estimated that 17 other people have lost their lives here either from falling or getting caught in the fast current. Apparently it is so strong that it can easily trap people in its currents and send them down the river with sharp rocks at every turn. So if you value your life you wouldn't have the urge to go swimming here especially at night because it is believed that the current is 10 times stronger. Now on our list, and at number five, we have the Eastern State Penitentiary in Pennsylvania, USA. This former prison was built in 1829, and it's infamously known to be the first prison that introduced solitary confinement. Prisoners would be sent here to be completely isolated, and whenever they left their cell, a black hood would be placed over their head to ensure that they didn't have any interactions with anyone else. Due to this prison's harsh approach, Many prisoners went insane and solitary confinement was actually removed there in 1913. But ever since then, reports of heavily paranormal activities have been a common thing. From shadowy figures, evil cackling, and ghostly faces, this prison is sure to terrify anyone who steps foot inside. The Mines of Paris crashes in at number four. These underground tunnels shouldn't be confused with the Paris catacombs. These tunnels are not open to the public and exploring the mines is easy illegal because it is so dangerous. The tunnels are not regulated, they aren't patrolled, and they are super unsafe. But that still doesn't stop people from going inside of it. Legends has it that cults and strange creatures can be found in the mines, and there might even be a gateway to hell down there. The tunnels stretch 600 kilometers underground, and most of the tunnels are not on any map. So saying that, it is extremely easy to get lost down there. Some hallways are even flooded and they're so narrow that you can't even go through them. This place is a labyrinth and it is rumored that if you go down there, you can hear people screaming for help, but you'll never be able to find them. Pobiglia, Italy is at number three on our list. This place is probably one of the most illegal places someone should ever visit. This island is located off of the coast of Northern Italy near Venice. But don't be fooled, this little island isn't a romantic destination. It has a very dark past. Proviglia, I'm not even sure if I'm pronouncing the name right, but I'm trying my best on this one. But it used to be the home to thousands of refugees, black plague, victims, and the island acted as a quarantine. So with all of that being said, this island is believed to be extremely haunted, and apparently you can still hear the screams of the victims here. The abandoned asylum is also said to be filled with ghosts of patients that were abused there. So if you're ever in Italy, just stick to the popular tourist spots like Rome, Venice, don't visit the island or else you will seriously regret it. Number two takes us all the way over to the Cecil Hotel in Los Angeles. In case you were ever considering staying at the Cecil Hotel, here are a few reasons why you should reconsider, you know, staying at Motel 8 instead. This hotel has been the site of many gruesome suicides and murders. A crazy number of guests have mysteriously died, including one woman who was later found dead on the roof 
of the hotel after riding in an elevator alone. Oh, and several serial killers have stayed there while they were on a killing spree. So you can literally be sleeping in a room next to a serial killer. All of these incidents force the owner to change the name of the hotel to stay on Main, but regardless of the name, this is definitely a place that you never want to check into because you may never check out. And now topping our list, and at number one, we have the Suicide Forest in Japan, known as the place that you go to but never come back from, aka the forest, the suicide forest that Logan Paul himself made famous. He went in as a liked YouTuber and came out hated. So it's estimated that 100 people a year committed suicide there and for this reason a lot of people believe that this forest is haunted. The suicide forest is so thick and dense some people use guide wire to avoid getting lost. Well that's because if you can't get out no one will be able to hear your screams. It should also be noted that if you go off the path you will most likely stumble across a dead body, decaying bones or other dark human remains. Either way I would stay far away from this place especially at Nighttime. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have the Hoya Bashu Forest. This dense woodland is located in the heart of Transylvania, Romania, which, as I'm sure you're well aware, already has quite the reputation for eerie and spooky things. The forest covers an area of approximately 250 hectares and is known for its unusual and unexplained occurrences, earning it the nickname the Bermuda Triangle of Transylvania. How convenient. The forest is known for its twisted and gnarled trees, which create a very haunting atmosphere, as well as the strange circular patches of land that dot the area known as Hoya, which some believe to be the result of UFO activity. The forest has also been the site of many alleged paranormal events, including ghost sightings, unexplained lights and sounds, and even disappearances, which is exactly why many believe it is a portal to another world. Some visitors to the forest who didn't disappear have even reported rashes, nausea, and feelings of anxiety afterwards. Despite its eerie reputation, the forest is also a place of immense natural beauty with a diverse range of flora and fauna. The forest is home to many rare and endangered species of plants and animals, including several species of orchids and woodpeckers. The forest is also rich in its history, as it is said it was once the site of a medieval fortress and was an important location during the Second World War. The area is also steeped in local folklore and legends with stories of supernatural beings and witches who are said to dwell in the forest. All in all, this place is jam-packed with spooky stories, strange occurrences, and beautiful but haunting scenery. All the things that make it the perfect place to enter another world. In our number 9 spot today, we have the real Bermuda Triangle, not the Bermuda Triangle of Transylvania. The Bermuda Triangle is really just the mecca when it comes to mysterious disappearances and rumors and urban legends, so of course it had to make it onto this list today. The Triangle, which sits in between Florida, Puerto Rico, and Bermuda, earned its deadly reputation starting back in the 1970s. Since then, there has been about 80 aircrafts and 60 boats that have gone missing in the Triangle, which only fueled rumors that there was some sort of force or supernatural cause that was making this area one where people would often go missing. There have been intense electrical forces and tunnel-like clouds reported in the triangle, which some may believe is the cause of the disappearances. Some others believe it's weather patterns. Some believe it's the entrance to a parallel universe or a place where aliens like to abduct their victims. And some people just like to dismiss the idea that there's any sort of mystery at all. At this point, exactly what is going on with the Bermuda Triangle remains a mystery. In our number eight spot today, we have the Oregon Vortex. Just off of Interstate 5 in Southern Oregon lies what is called the Oregon Vortex. According to local legend, it is said that this area and the strange and mysterious stories surrounding it aren't just modern legends, but perhaps it stems back further. People have said that the stories of the Oregon Vortex actually stem back to when indigenous Americans referred to it as the Forbidden Land. It is said that during these times, people traveling on horses would often find their horses refusing to go into the area. So clearly, Something strange was going on in there that was spooking these animals right out. Scientists have speculated that the land might contain some kind of crossed magnetic lines that produce basically like a force field, but whatever it really is, the place is truly strange.
strange. Things appear very differently here. It's sort of like everything is an optical illusion. The area is basically a parallel universe in itself. In our number seven spot today, we have Socotra Island. Socotra Island is a remote island located in the Arabian Sea, about 240 kilometers east of the Horn of Africa and 380 kilometers south of the Arabian Peninsula, and it has been described as, quote, the most alien looking place on Earth. It is a part of Yemen and is known for its unique and otherworldly qualities, as well as its rare and endemic plant and animal species. In fact, so many species here are endemic that up to a third of its plant life isn't found anywhere else on Earth. The landscape of Socotra is strikingly surreal, with towering limestone cliffs, deep caves, and white sand beaches. The island is home to unusual rock formations and the infamous dragon blood trees. This strange looking umbrella shaped tree have a red sap inside of them, which is thought to be the dragon's blood of the ancients. In addition to its natural wonders, Socotra has a rich cultural heritage with a mix of African, Arabian, and South Asian influences. The island's inhabitants, the Socotri people, have a unique language and a way of life that has been preserved for centuries. Overall, this island is just truly otherworldly, and it offers a glimpse into a world unlike any other with the island's landscape being compared to that of a science fiction movie set. In our number six spot today, we have Salar de Uni. Salar de Uni is the world's largest salt flat located in the southwest of Bolivia near the crest of the Andes. The area spans over 10,000 square kilometers and is characterized by a stunning otherworldly landscape. This peculiar place was formed by the evaporation of a prehistoric lake, leaving behind a thick layer of salt crust that stretches as far as the eye can see. During the rainy season, the salt flat becomes a giant mirror reflecting the sky and clouds in a breathtaking spectacle. It is truly unbelievable. It looks completely fake and is somehow super real. The unique terrain and climate of the area has also given rise to many unusual natural formations. The flat is dotted with small islands of rock and gigantic cacti, which serve as a haven for a variety of animal species. Yes, I said giant cacti. While this place is mostly devoid of life, plant, or animal, that is safe for these cacti that can grow to be 12 meters or 39 feet tall. The area is also home to many active geysers and hot springs, as well as colorful lakes that are filled with flamingos during certain times of the year. In fact, in November, this place becomes a feeding ground for three South American species of flamingo feeding on local brine shrimps. These are the Chilean, Andean, and rare James flamingos. Aside from its natural wonders, Salar de Uni is also rich in cultural history. The area has been inhabited by the indigenous Aymara people for thousands of years, and they have maintained their traditional way of life and culture to this day. In our number five spot today, we have the Challenger Deep. The Challenger Deep is the deepest known point in our ocean, around 10,900 meters deep. It is located in the Pacific Ocean in the southern part of the Mariana Trench, and because of its location, lack of light, and immense pressure, it hasn't been explored very much. The extreme environment is certainly set up for there to be a whole host of species that we know absolutely nothing about, but it is not an area that can be easily explored by humans. The Challenger Deep has only been visited four times, and only for short periods of time, so there is so much more that is waiting to be uncovered at this deep, dark part of our ocean. And I don't know about you, but I feel like there are crazy amounts of ocean creatures that could fully be aliens. They are so strange and interesting and unique. So who in the world knows what really lurks down there? In our number four spot today, we have East Scotia Ridge. In the Southern Ocean, about 2,400 meters down, you'll find this biological community or habitat that was discovered in 2012. East Scotia Ridge is a remote underwater mountain range located between South Georgia Island and the Antarctic Peninsula. The ridge is known for its unique and very mysterious geology, as well as its diverse marine life and harsh environment. It is dark down there, but it is also hot as it is being warmed by hydrothermal vents, and it can reach temperatures up to 382 degrees Celsius, which is absolutely insane. Because of this dark, hot environment, of course we are going to find a whole bunch of new species species that were previously unknown to us. Some of these species include a new kind of albino octopus, and also albino hairy lobster that's referred to as a yeti lobster, and apparently even a crab that uses its hair to grow a bacteria that detoxifies the water. 
okay? Parallel universe, that's what I'm saying. In our number three spot today, we have the Paris Catacombs. The catacombs in Paris are some of the most famous in the world. This is a place that holds the remains of more than six million people, and it's also the source of an insane amount of urban spooky legends. This ossuary was created originally in an effort to eliminate the overflowing of the city's cemeteries. To be honest, this place, after being built, was mostly forgotten, but during the 19th century, it became a novelty place for concerts and private events, which is certainly macabre. After some renovations and construction, they became open to the public in 1874, and they have been the source of much mystery ever since. These catacombs are expansive, with most of them being blocked off to the public, which begs the question, why? In 2009, there is said to have been a video camera discovered inside the catacombs with footage that showed an unidentified man dropping the camera in fear of something that's also unidentified before running away into complete darkness. I'm just saying, although the catacombs sees a ton of visitors every year, I'm not convinced that we know all of what's going on down there. And I don't want to know. Keep your secrets. In our number two spot today, we have the Moval Cave. This cave is located in Romania, just a few kilometers from the coast of the Black Sea, and it was first discovered in 1986. This cave has been isolated from the outside world for millions of years, and basically everything that goes on inside of it is different than what we are used to. The cave life is not based on photosynthesis and rather chemosynthesis. The level of oxygen in the cave is around a third of what is normally found in the atmosphere, and of the 48 species found in the cave, 33 three of them were endemic to just the cave. This cave looks absolutely terrifying, but thank goodness for the brave scientists who don't let that get in the way, because as scary as it looks, it is just as, if not more, amazing to be able to hear about what exactly this cave holds. In our number one spot today, we have the Zhangjiajie National Forest Park. This stunning nature reserve is located in the Hunan province of China, and it spans over 11,000 hectares, and is known for its towering sandstone pillars and breathtaking natural scenery. The park is characterized by its unique and otherworldly landscapes, which includes thousands of the tall sandstone pillars that rise up from the ground. The pillars are often shrouded in mist, creating a very mystical and surreal atmosphere. Visitors can explore the park's many hiking trails, which wind through dense forests and lead to stunning lookout points, including the famous Avatar Hallelujah Mountain that inspired the scenery in the film Avatar. You too can visit Pandora right here on Earth. The area is also home to a diverse range of of flora and fauna, including many rare and endangered species. Aside from the natural, this is also a spot rich in history, as it was once the home to many ancient temples and shrines located within the park. The area has been inhabited for over 3,000 years, and visitors can explore many historic sites and learn about the region's rich cultural heritage. Overall, this national forest park is a truly spectacular destination that combines natural beauty, cultural history, and a sense of awe and wonder that is sure to visitors feeling as though they went to another world. Starting off this countdown, we have Svalbard. This is a group of islands located between mainland Norway and the North Pole. In fact, it has been given the name as one of the world's northernmost inhabited areas. Just over 2,000 individuals live there. In fact, there's more polar bears living there than humans. And sometimes the bears like to wander into the town. And if you want to leave the outskirts of the town, you have to carry a firearm in defense. You know, just in case one of these bears get hungry and choose to attack. Not only that, but this place has very long days and very long nights. From April to the end of August, the sun never sets. So it's literally sunlight for 24 hours a day. And then during the winter months, you get 24 hours of darkness. Honestly, my sleep schedule would hate me if I lived there. In our ninth spot, we have Oymyakon, Russia. This town is said to be the coldest town in the world. So next time you complain about the weather, just know that there are people living here and having it 10 times worse. So their average daily temperatures are negative 58 degrees Fahrenheit, which is negative 50 degrees Celsius. This town is so cold that their name literally translates to pole of cold. On top of that, their ground is permanently frozen, so they can't really farm or grow crops. This restricts them to mainly eating raw frozen fish or meat. It also means that they can't have a plumbing system because any water in the pipes will freeze. 
so they rely on outhouses. And you know how cars tend to die because of the cold? Well, they have to worry about that constantly. In fact, they need to have their cars continuously running if they're outside, or they need to be placed inside a heated garage. Also, if they're outside wandering around, they have to worry about frostbite. They can't have any skin exposed. Currently, around 500 people live there, and I don't know why, honestly. Not only is it freezing, but the town faces 21 hours of darkness a day. So talk about depressing. In our eighth spot today, we have Cooper Pedy, Australia. Now, I won't lie, this next place is pretty fascinating. So Cooper Pedy is an underground town in Australia. Yeah, you heard me, it's underground. They live underground. Now that's because this area is known for its extreme heat. So back in the day when they didn't have like electricity and fans and air conditioning, miners in the area would remain underground to escape the heat. Then eventually they were like, hmm, what if we just live underground? And that's basically how the town was formed. Currently around 2000 people live there and it's not just a bunch of homes. No, no, you got a full on hospital and church and shops down there. They also have their own government as well. Now, when you are above ground, they actually have warning signs telling people that there are unmarked holes. So you don't just, you know, fall through someone's chimney and end up in their living room. Not gonna lie though, this place would be really cool to visit. In our seventh spot today, we have Atacama Desert. Some areas in this desert haven't seen precipitation in 400 years. That's how dry it is there. In fact, its soil is drier than any any other on earth. So dry that no organism can live in it, meaning they can't even farm because all crops would just immediately die. With all that being said, this area is home to the Atacamio tribe. They've been living there since before the Inca Empire. In order to survive, farmers lay the horns of freshly killed cattle to attract insects, which then fertilize the land to increase crop yields. Not only that, but they capture moisture using fog nets in order to create water. So it's pretty clever if you ask me. Moving on to number six, we have Dalol, Ethiopia. Now this town has been given the name the gateway to hell. And that's because it can reach temperatures of 145 degrees. In fact, due to its heat, it is said to be the hottest inhabited place on earth. One reason why it's so hot is because it sits above an active volcano. It's so hot that if you stand in one place for a few minutes, it could literally melt your shoes. So you might be wondering if it's so hot, how do people there even survive? Well, they paint their homes and objects so that it will reflect the sun. But as of now, it's a ghost town. No one lives there permanently, but people do go there to visit. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with Megingo Island. Megingo Island is a small island located on Lake Victoria, which is the largest lake in Africa. How small is this island, you ask? Well, it's only 2,000 square miles, which if that means nothing to you, it's less than the size of a football field. That's how small it is. But there's still about 500 people living there, and they're mainly fishermen. But since there's so many people living on such a small island, it's incredibly packed. Houses are crammed together and are made from tin and any other material that wash up on their island. Yet, they still manage to find room for four bars and a hair salon. You know, the essentials. Now, the main attraction to this island is that it's home to tons of Nile perch fish. They can catch way more of this fish from this island than anywhere else. It was said that the first inhabitants came to this island in 1991, and that's when the island was only covered in weeds and snakes. Nowadays, it's just overwhelmed with all things fishing related. Coming in at number four, we have Kerguelen Islands. Located more than 2,000 miles away from civilization, you got the Kerguelen Islands. These islands are located in the Southern Indian Ocean and have been given the name the Desolation Islands. And that's due to how remote they are. Like I said, they are 2,000 miles away from Africa and the only way you can get there is by a ship. But this ship only operates four days days a year. Not only that, but the weather there isn't great. They get rain, sleet, or snow 300 days a year. The only people that dare to live there are French researchers. 50 stay there in the winter, 100 in the summer. Besides them, they have no permanent residence. In our third spot today, we have Madog. This is the most remote county in Tibet. The only way to get there is by a single highway. But before that highway was built in 2013, the only way you could get there was by crossing a 200 meter long long suspension cable 100 meters high in the air. And in order to bring supplies in, they had to carry it in and out by hand. Now, there have been attempts to create more roads or highways leading into this area. However, a number of mudslides and earthquakes have taken them down. 
Moving on to number two, we have a Minson Scott South Pole. Located 9,000 feet above sea level on an ice sheet, we have a Minson Scott South Pole Station. This is a station that the United States use for scientific research. This station is the only inhabited place on Earth where the sun is continuously visible for six months and then is continuously dark for the next six months. As a result, they say they only have one day and one night per year. Not only that, but the weather there is very frigid. The temperatures can dip as low as minus 90 degrees, making it one of the most coldest places on Earth. The only people living there are 50 to 200 researchers and their food and supplies are dropped to them by cargo planes. And in our number one spot today, we have Longyear Buin. This is the world's northernmost settlement. It's located in the Svalbard Archipelago, which we previously talked about. Now, what's wild about this is that they have a very unusual rule if you want to live there. Their rule is no dying. That's right. And this is because of the permafrost and sub-zero temperatures. So it can easily preserve a body, which they really don't want. Also, it's hard to bury bodies there because obviously the ground is frozen. So as a result, people that are dying are flown to Oslo to die there. It's pretty crazy, isn't it? Number 10, Surtsey Island. On part one of this list, we mentioned the global seed vaults. Well, for part two, we need to mention the island where seeds are forbidden. In fact, any human activity is forbidden. This island is also pretty new. It was born from a volcanic eruption back in 1963, and scientists are using the fresh face of land to study what it looks like to, well, not have a Starbucks. They're studying ecosystems without any human interference, which I think is really creepy, but also quite interesting. Scientists studying the land here have to just follow one rule. And that rule is no seeds. I mean, that's the whole point, right? Like, obviously. One time, a scientist had to go number two, and in turn, he accidentally grew a tomato plant. He pooped a tomato plant out. Not really, there was a seed somewhere in there. That would be painful. They acted fast and got rid of the plant in order to not interfere with their study. But like, what a weird job. Guy can't even take a sh at work. How stressful is that? Number nine, the Forbidden City. Built all the way back in 1420, around the time of the Ming Dynasty, the Forbidden City is said to be extremely haunted, aside from being the largest ancient palatial structure on the planet. Located in Beijing, China, it's one of the five most important palaces in the world. It was the Imperial Palace of China from 1420 to 1912. More than 24 emperors lived here in this massive city that took one million workers 14 years to build. Inside the city, there's around 980 buildings, and there's roughly 8,000 rooms. It's a lot of rooms to haunt, really, ghost paradise. It was declared a World Heritage Site in 1987, but come 2000, a Starbucks was built on the land. Yeah, the classic, look at how beautiful this landmark is, let's open up a gift shop scenario. By the time 2007 came along, there was enough outrage to get officials to close said Starbucks. No more venti lattes for you, Sarah, sorry. Number eight, the Gates of Guinea or he gates of Guinea, as I wrote. The souls of the dead have to go somewhere, and depending on your beliefs, that somewhere could be either really beautiful and peaceful, or absolutely terrifying. In the world of voodoo, that place is an underworld called the Gates of Guinea. And here's the front door. Come on in. Awesome, take your shoes off. Located in Louisiana, this tomb, that of voodoo priestess Marie Laveau, is apparently the entrance to these deep waters, this twilight realm. And some voodoo followers try and open these gates to access the souls of the deep. Don't play Pokemon Go here. Do not. You don't want to do that. Leave the Poliwog at home, okay? He's a trap. You don't need him. Number seven, Mount Osor. Mount Osor is not the name of just one singular mountain, but instead it's an entire mountainous range. Translating to Mount Fear, Cool. This area is known as the entrance to the afterlife because it features all the geographical elements that are similar to the Japanese Buddhist descriptions of paradise and hell. So not only is this area home to eight symbolic mountain tops, but also a lake with acidic water that only one species of fish can survive in. We got acid fish, come on in, grab a canoe. There's also nothing but bear pits full of vipers. Not an ideal spot to take your family camping, that's for sure. Beyond this mountain range, there's even a river that's known as the border between earth and hell. This is where each and every soul must cross in order to reach the afterlife. If I'm somehow selling you on this idea and you want to take a trip up to Viper Lane, when you get there, you'd find statues and offerings along the banks of this river, which are intended to help the past souls find their way during this journey because it's definitely not good if the souls get lost because you don't want to even know where you end up. Getting lost in a journey to the afterlife? No, man, I don't, keep me on track. Ways. 
Thank you. Every year from July 22nd to 24th, those wanting to communicate with the dead will head to this temple located here to speak with spiritual mediums known as the Itako. So if you're feeling like spicing up your weekend, go gamble with souls of the dead. Have fun. Text us when you get there. And back. Number six, Ghost City. Fengdu is located in China and it's often referred to as the city of ghosts. For a long time, it was believed that this is where the dead stop by on their way to the afterlife and it is here where they must pass three tests in order to get there. Three tests, it's a lot of tests right after you die. The first one is for the newly departed souls who must cross over the bridge of helplessness, sounds like a good bridge, better than the bridge to Terabithia, which is meant to judge their virtue. Okay, so there's demons here who judge whether the soul is good or bad and the ones who are good can pass while the bad ones are pushed into the water below. Imagine a demon pushing you into the water, it's worse than getting pushed in at a pool party. The ones who pass that first test go on to the ghost torturing pass where they stand in front of the ruler of the underworld. If they pass that judgment test then the third and final trial takes place at the Tianzi Palace where they will stand on a certain stone for one minute, also on one leg. For three minutes they have to do this. This is where hot yoga comes in handy. Only a good soul can do this, apparently. If you lose your balance, like I just did back there, maybe you're not wearing your minimal runners and you're wearing Tim's, or maybe you're just condemned to hell. Either one. Fengdu also has many temples and shrines which hold paintings and sculptures that represent people in the underworld. So go take a look at the oldest, awfulest selfie on the planet, that's for sure. Go take a look at some old demon art, have fun. Number five, Huska Castle. Located north of Prague in the Czech Republic, Huska Castle is supposedly built over a bottomless hole that leads directly to, you guessed it, Hell. Legend says the 13th century king Ottokar II offered a pardon to any prisoner who was willing to get lowered into this hole and live to talk about it. What a deal! The first prisoner, when they were lowered into that pit, they only lasted 30 seconds before they started screaming. Legend has it that when he was brought back up, his hair turned white and he'd aged a great amount. That's a lot of stress in 30 seconds. What he saw, however, was also pretty intense and it kind of explains it. He saw these half human, half demon type creatures flying around with scaly wings. Awesome, that's terrifying. The castle was built over the hole without a water source because it wasn't initially meant to be used by humans. Instead, it was only built for demons, should they rise from the mysterious hole. That way they can get out. God love these demons, you know? You don't want them trapped there for too long. It's a lot of noise, a lot of complaints, a lot of pollution. <laughs> Number four, Nihua Island. Located in Hawaii, this island has not yet turned into a resort either. What do you know? In fact, the population of this island is a whopping 170, also referred to as the Forbidden Island. It was bought back in 1864 by Elizabeth Sinclair, and it's been privately owned since hence the small population. Thing is, in 1952, the polio epidemic hit these islands and a ban was then put in place. So now you couldn't leave nor enter the island. Nobody got sick, which is great, but now if you want to enter this island, you need to gain special access, which is a lot harder than it may seem. Even if you're rich, even if you're loaded, you can't just buy your way onto the island. So for now, we'll just zoom in on Google Earth. Bird's eye view for the win. It's a nice island. It's like a moon shape. It's good. Number three, Island Moor, Scotland. What better island to visit than one with nobody on it? gonna be pretty quiet. In the early 1900s, a ship was heading to the Flannan Islands, completely uninhabited, but on the ship we had Captain James Harvey and Joseph Moore. They were heading there to watch the lighthouse, but upon arrival, nobody greeted them. He blew his horn, waited, still nobody. That's when you gotta text them, be like, hey, I'm here, come down the thousands of steps, thanks. The replacement lighthouse keeper rode to shore and started walking up the steep set of stairs towards the lighthouse, but when he got there, he realized the door was unlocked and two of the three coats were missing. Upon further investigation, he saw the half-eaten food, a chair that had been tossed over, and the kitchen clock had stopped. No sign of the keepers. Hmm. When checking the lighthouse log, the previous days were odd. December 12th, the second assistant, Thomas Marshall, wrote, severe winds, the likes of which I have never seen before in 20 years. James was awfully quiet, and William, the third lad, was crying the whole time. Sinister vibes for sure. That's like the movie The Lighthouse in real life. That's a hard no for me, never going to this island. Next. Number two, Paviglia Island, Italy. The small island of Paviglia has taken many, many lives. When the bubonic plague arrived in 1348, the island became a quarantine colony. So if you had symptoms, you were just sent to this island to die. How horrible is that? Then again, in 1630, the Black Death crept in, and then once again, the center of this island became a mass graveyard. In the 1800s, the mentally ill were sent to this island because an asylum was built. The rumor was that in the 1930s, this doctor tried crazy experiments on these patients 
Egyptians, and then he himself went crazy and then jumped from the tall bell tower. Although the tower doesn't stand anymore, his screams apparently are still heard by locals. The soil is 50% human remains as well, so if you're looking to plant some haunted aloe vera, well, there you go. And finally, number one, Fort Knox. Located in Kentucky, USA, this place really is the jackpot. The most heavily guarded place on the planet, and it's not an Egyptian pyramid. Odd. The amount of gold in here might actually be a lot more than ancient pharaohs, to be fair, so listen up. Fort Knox is home to a large amount of the United States gold reserves. Thing is, even if you work here, you're still not getting into Harry Potter's vault of treasures. Each staff member only knows part of the combination to get in, so you can't just heist your way out of lunch one day. Rumor has it, there's apparently no gold in here, but in Instead, they're studying an extraterrestrial. Another rumor is that the United States actually sold off all the gold ages ago, and they just don't want anybody to know. I weirdly vote the latter. Starting us off at number 10, The Hanging Jail. Actually called the Beauregard Parish Jail, it opened in 1915, and it was actually kind of a big deal because it had extraordinary amenities for a jail. Each cell had a window and a bathroom, and cells on the top floor even had a skylight. But despite its beautiful Beautiful architecture, it was also the site of Louisiana's first double execution. In 1926, two men were committed after killing and robbing a taxi driver and sentenced to be hanged. They claimed innocence, but still the verdict passed and the two men died in the jail, giving it the infamous name. It remained open until 1981, and now a museum, it's believed to be haunted by the two men along with other inmates who felt they were unjustly put behind bars. Many have reported being pushed or hearing voices while visiting, and some have even captured photos of strange, inexplicable, shadowy figures lurking on the porch and window, leaving no other explanation than to assume the jail remains a haunted and terrifying place to visit. Coming in at number 9. Pleasant Hall. This story has two versions, so I will let you decide which one you think is true. Once upon a time, while attending the Louisiana State University, a resident tragically took her life in the now infamous room 312. One story says the girl killed her boyfriend in a fit of rage and then, shocked at her actions, took her own life because she could not live with what she had done. The other story claims the girl jumped out of the window of her room and fell to her impending doom, terrifying the students on campus that witnessed the horrifying sight. But which one really happened? Well, it seems that is the hard part to find out. But what's not difficult to know is that the spirit of the girl remains, haunting Pleasant Hall to this day. Students have reported seeing her ghost roam the campus and hearing strange noises coming from the other side of room 312. And sometimes at night, when you least expect it, the door to room 312 will open and shut all on its own. Coming in at number 8, St. Louis Cemetery number 1. Regarded as the city of the dead, the St. Louis Cemetery number 1 holds more ghost stories than you'd want to encounter in a lifetime. In the span of a mere block, the cemetery has over 700 tombs and over 100,000 bodies are known to be buried at the site. Most famously, it is the burial site of Voodoo Queen Marie Laveau, the most revered and feared practitioner in New Orleans. History. Reports of her ghost have detailed her in her signature red and white turban and claim she will suddenly appear out of nowhere and then vanish from plain sight just as fast. Visitors have experienced scratching, pinching, shoving, suddenly becoming ill, and even hearing her haunting voice echo across the cemetery, sending many that have dared to visit running for the hills. So just be careful if you choose to stop by. If you aren't careful, she could curse you for Life. Next up at number 7, the Calcasia Courthouse. The history of capital punishment is a torrid one, and as it turns out, this courthouse is actually famous for just that. Back in the 1940s, there was a woman named Tony Jo McHuston. She lived quite a tumultuous life involved in drugs and her local brothel, but one day she fell in love with a man who frequented her establishment named Claude Henry. And so they got married and she started to really turn her life around. But 
After Claude was sent to jail for 50 years for killing someone, something inside Tony snapped. She planned to bust Claude out of jail with a friend, but in the process of stealing a car, killed the owner and left him in a ditch. She was caught and sentenced to death and would become the first ever woman to be executed by the electric chair in Louisiana. It said her spirit still haunts the courthouse, locking doors and messing around with the filing systems during the day. But steer clear at night. As residents report, you can smell her burning hair and hear her unruly screams echo through the streets. Coming in at number six, Pea Farm. Nicknamed the Pea Farm, it is not actually a farm, nor does it have anything to do with peas. It is, however, an old abandoned prison. The facility was in operation between 1905 to 1950, and rumor has it that life was incredibly rough and difficult at the Pea Farm for prisoners, even more so so than your typical prison. Beatings and lashings were commonplace, and even killing of prisoners was nothing to bat an eye at. So it's no surprise that those whose life may have ended here have stuck around, maybe trying to seek revenge on those who hurt them. Today, the prison is strictly off limits to visitors, but those that walk past have reported hearing shrieks and other strange noises coming from inside the abandoned building. Maybe no one is allowed for a good reason. Next up at number five, Bonnie. Bonnie and Clyde's ambush site. Maybe you've heard of the infamous couple, but just in case you haven't, let me catch you up. They were notorious bank robbers across Louisiana and Texas during the Great Depression in America and made quite a name for themselves. In recent years, it has been suggested their exploits were exaggerated, but one thing that wasn't is how they died. The day was May 23rd, 1934, and police from both Louisiana and Texas managed to corner them in their stolen car. Car. Authorities fired more than a hundred bullets at the couple, and as the story goes, you could hear Bonnie's scream from the next town over. Residents claim that if you visit the site of their death, the ghosts of the couple will make themselves well known to you. Apparitions have shown in photographs, and some have even heard what they believe to be Bonnie's scream as she took her last few breaths on this earth. Coming in at number four. Oak Alley. Once upon a time, it was one of the largest plantations in Louisiana, and just like every other of its kind, it has a dark past. Since its dark days, it has turned into a bed and breakfast and historical site, but the people that were tortured remain, haunting the ground and terrorizing visitors. Numerous accounts have claimed to hear unexplained sounds like blood curdling screams in the middle of the night or the sound of a horse drawn carriage clopping along the path. Some visitors have even experienced being touched or grabbed by an unseen entity, and one investigator got so scared he dropped his camera while trying to capture a spirit. Paranormal investigators have managed to capture several EVPs that indicate unhappy ghosts lingering the property, and though no one has been hurt staying here yet, tread carefully as you never know just when you could set the spirits off. Coming in at number three. Alice's grave. Alice died in the 19th century, and although she had a fairly normal life while alive, her death and afterlife were anything but expected. She was laid to rest in an above ground grave, but soon after, many of the townspeople began to question was the grave haunted, or worse, was Alice a witch? As the legend goes, in the middle of the night, the large slab of marble covering her grave was removed on three separate occasions, and each time, Time, her remains were left outside the grave. No one stepped forward admitting to have moved Alice or the slab, which led people to believe that Alice was a witch trying to escape her grave and haunt the town. Eventually, large iron bars were placed over the grave in an attempt to hold her spirit inside. But this hasn't seemed to stop her, as locals claim you can still see her wandering the cemetery at night. But just exactly what is she looking for? That is one of the many unanswered questions that lead leave visitors terrified, unsure if she comes in peace or if she is out for revenge. Next up at number two, the Manchac Swamp. While many are familiar with the legendary voodoo priestess Marie Laveau, she was not the only one of her time. Julia Brown was a well respected healer and midwife who resided in a small village called Frenier. At first, she loved caring for her village, but after some time, she started to feel disrespected by her community, feeling as though they were were taking her gifts for granted. Julia began scaring the village, telling them dooming predictions about.
about their impending deaths, and the townspeople, unsure if she was placing a curse or foretelling their future, became very troubled. Shortly before her own death, she said, One day I'm gonna die and I'm gonna take all you with me. And just days after she was buried, three entire villages were destroyed by a hurricane and hundreds of lives were lost. To this day, many believe the spirit of Julia Brown haunts the swamp, and visitors have reported hearing blood curdling screams and the sound of her voice singing cryptic and frightening songs, terrifying all those that dare walk by. And last up in our number one spot, La Lorie Mansion. Arguably one of the most infamous buildings in all of Louisiana, La Lorie Mansion was once home to the cruel and torturous Madame Delphine La Lorie. Even in her time, she was regarded as a monster and was known to have her slaves taken from her on more than one occasion due to their outrageous mistreatment. In 1834, a fire broke out in her mansion, and when police and fire marshals arrived at the site, they found one of her slaves chained to the stove, claiming to have started the fire to try and take her own life to escape the cruelty. Another seven victims were found in her attic, suspended from the ceiling, mutilated and barely alive, stating to have been imprisoned for months. Once news broke out of her cruelties, citizens attacked the house and demolished everything they could. While the original building no longer stands, the grounds it stood on are some of the most haunted in all of Louisiana, as it's believed nearly 100 people lost their lives under Madame Delphine's cruel supervision. Visitors have reported feeling the violent touches of ghostly hands, and a medium that visited stated that there is a very dark demonic entity that resides within the building's walls. So just tread carefully, should you choose to visit, the spirits that that live there are not too thrilled by visitors in their home.